The Earth has oceans and clouds because it orbits a band around the sun called the habitable zone, which means it's just the right temperature for liquid water. And that makes it the only planet in the solar system where we know life can thrive. But as the sun becomes more powerful, the habitable zone will move. For a vision of the Earth in two billion years' time, astrobiologist Professor Lynn Rothschild believes we should look to Venus. Venus is up in the sky there. It's the brightest object after the sun and the moon. It's right near Jupiter this morning. It's just an absolutely spectacular day to see it. Venus and the Earth formed out of the same materials. They're roughly the same size. The difference is that Venus is closer to the sun. It's no surprise Venus is warmer than Earth. But strangely, Venus is even hotter than Mercury, despite being further from the sun. In 2006, the Venus Express probe launched towards our nearest planet to analyze the Venusian atmosphere in unprecedented detail. It found a vital clue among the clouds to how Venus became so hot. Venus Express allowed us to see that there was a lot of deuterium, which is a, a heavy form of hydrogen left. And that's indicative of the fact that there was once water here. It soon became clear that in the past, Venus was a very different world. So here was this beautiful water world, not too dissimilar to maybe what the Earth is like today. There was liquid water and reasonable atmospheric pressure and organic compounds. There's no reason that there shouldn't have been life. The evidence suggests that Venus was once in the habitable zone. But as the sun grew brighter three billion years ago, it would have had a dramatic effect on the planet's water. As the sun started to get hotter, the surface of Venus started to get hotter, and therefore the water turns into steam. And steam is a greenhouse gas, so that means it traps the solar radiation. And therefore, just like a greenhouse, it starts to get hotter and hotter. It seems a runaway greenhouse effect caused Venus to become the hottest planet in the solar system. Mercury, although closer to the sun, has no atmosphere and no water. Earth has both. And as the brighter sun evaporates our oceans, the effect is likely to be far more intense than the man-made global warming we see today. Over the next two billion years, temperatures on Earth will rocket. Life here must adapt or die. Yellowstone National Park is a natural laboratory for Lynn to study how life can survive in extreme conditions. The reason it's so great is that we have the whole range from the top predators, things like wolves and bears and so on, all the way down to the beavers and the herbivores and down to the very tiny organisms and even some incredible microbes. Life here is used to dealing with extremes. But in about a half a billion years time, these extremes will go in the opposite direction as temperatures could climb by up to 20 degrees in some places. By then, life as we know it will have evolved to be very different. But just as some of today's animals have adapted to survive harsh winters, in the future, 
they may use similar strategies to cope with scorching summers. As the sun gets hotter, you could imagine the winter as being the very pleasant season and the summer has become unbearably hot. So if you're thinking about a bear that lives in an area like this that would normally hibernate in the winter, if you turn the thermostat on the earth high enough, it might be the reverse. So that now animals would be hibernating in the summer and be active in the winter. And grasses would be setting seed now in the spring. The seeds would be what would carry the plant through this harsh summer. And then as the rain started again in the autumn, they would germinate and you would get the lush green in the winter. In less than a billion years time, the greenhouse effect is expected to take off, sending temperatures soaring. As it gets hotter and hotter on the land, eventually even the winters will be too hot for most organisms certainly to live. So if you had a large animal like say a bison that's also warm-blooded. As it gets hotter and hotter, it won't be able to cool down and it will eventually die. And so ultimately, large animals like that will go extinct. In just over a billion years from now, the land could be nothing but a parched desert, devoid of life. The air is gonna heat up much more quickly than water will. And so I predict that just like the ancestors of whales and dolphins and so on move from the land to the water, so will the descendants of bison if they want to survive. But models suggest that in two billion years time, even the water will have gone. As it boils away, the Earth would increasingly resemble Venus today. In less than three billion years time, it's thought that the searing sun and a runaway greenhouse effect will have wiped out virtually all life on Earth. But intelligent life may just find a way out. We have something that the other organisms out there don't have, and that is we have technology. And we're gonna have the option of going to other planets. As it gets too hot for the Earth, Mars will start to warm up. And so that means that it's just possible Mars will become a better place for life. Who knows, I have great faith in our descendants. By then, Mars is expected to be in the habitable zone. So it could provide a refuge, but not forever because the next threat will be the entire solar system. From a hundred billion stars racing towards us, the Andromeda Galaxy. Scientists have long suspected it will one day crash into our galaxy, the Milky Way.